Okay, welcome to this uh, free tutorial. This uh, tutorial has been set up to address an issue with Ringmaster on one of my courses, Jewelry Design ZBrush 2018, where I use uh, Ringmaster. I do show other techniques, but um, Ringmaster is are used to create the base uh, on some of it. And uh, people have been having problems. It can be a bit temperamental. Um, Ringmaster, I haven't even installed it into ZBrush 2019. So I'm just gonna show you how we can create a accurate ring base inside of ZBrush just to address this issue. Okay, so if we come in here now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a block that's gonna work for us um, for the model. <clears throat> so we're gonna put this into size and everything else. So I'm gonna come in here first of all, and I'm gonna go and grab a Cylinder 3D. Now I want this particular model, so I've gone into Cylinder 3D, straight into edit mode. I want this particular one to be 16 um, and have a two millimeter thickness um, at about five or four millimeters. All right, so that's what I'm working to. So if I turn my polyframes on, I'm gonna go into initialize. The first thing I'm gonna do is take this down to zero. So I'm basically creating a little base for this. Now I'm gonna to go to the inner radius and I'm gonna pull this out to what I consider to be roughly um, two millimeters, which would be something like that. And then I'm gonna take the height um, here, which is actually I think on the Z, and drop it down to what I consider to be about four or five millimeters. Now it's not accurate at the moment, but don't worry about that. Uh, we What we have got here though is clean geometry, all right? That's the main thing. We've got nice clean geometry if we look, yeah? So um, now we've got this basically set up as a ring base. I'm going to just make that a polymesh 3D, okay? So I've got something like this. Great, so now we've got to get this to the actual size that we need it to be. So let us go and create some blocks and get this to actual size. So now we've made that polymesh 3D, I'm just gonna turn on the floor so you can see the floor plane there, okay? And I'm gonna go into scale and I'm gonna turn gizmo off. And if we measure across here now, you can see it's given us an arbitrary value up there of two. You see in the left hand corner here. So it's actually given us that value. And if I go up here, it's given us a value of 0 0.4, okay? So we don't have to worry about that. That is an arbitrary value. So if that unit said one or two, that could be two millimeters. It could be two centimeters, two inch, two foot, two miles. It doesn't matter. It's a value just that in the ZBrush world for it to kind of work itself out. So it, it doesn't really care the actual size of anything. It's just saying, okay, that's a, that's, that's a value of two, okay. So now we've got to actually say, right, okay, we want ZBrush to work in a real world uh, measurement system. So we're gonna use Scale Master to do that. So I'm gonna come down to the plugins. I'm gonna come down to Scale Master and you can already see we've got it set up as millimeters. And what we can do is we can set the scene scale. By the way, you can also center the subtools in the world. So what that means is if I get this, go back into Gizmo and just center this, and I'll just get this straight as well. And I move this over here right off. What you can do with this is you can center the subtools to the world like that. Now, if I had another one as well, it would center them. So let me just create a duplicate and Let's just offset that there. Move that over here. Let's go back to this one. Move that over here. Turn these both on. Go into here and center subtools to the world. So it actually puts, looks at all of it and it centers it to the world. So I'm going to delete this one out. Click OK. And I'll now just click this one and center this to world. So it'll jump back in the middle, like you can see there. OK, great. So, um, with that done, what I can do now is I can set up some, I can actually set the scene scale because at the moment it's an arbitrary value. So we've we've tackled center, we've got the millimeter set up here in millimeters. We're now gonna go set scene scale. I'm gonna go click that once and it's gonna come up with a value here. So it's given us two 0.44 and we're gonna click that. And now if we come into this 
and we use the gizmo again. So I'm just going to move, turn that off, come over here. You can see it's given us this value of two and this value here of two. And it's given us this one that's 0.42. So what I wanna do now is I wanna create a helper block that's actually gonna give me something to scale this up to. So what I'll do is I'll just turn the floor off for now. Um, so we can easily do this. We can do this inside of the um, scale master. But before we do that, what we'll do is we'll get this to approximately the right size. So I'm gonna go into Z plugins. I'm gonna make sure that um, our lock um, slider ratios We'll leave it as it is at the moment. I will be turning this off in a minute. Um, also down here, notice if you have more subtools, it's gonna resize them all. So be careful about that. If you've got one subtool, it's fine. Um, but if you wanna resize them all, you can click all. I'll leave it all for now, but just be aware of that. If you actually mouse over it, it tells you, it resizes all subtools based on the resizing of the selected subtool, okay? So in here, what I wanna do is I wanna put a value now, 16 millimeters on the X and the Z. And of course the Y is, is changing. So look, notice if I put 22 in here and I hit enter, this changes here because of this aspect ratio, okay? So for now, I'll put 16 in, which is gonna give me a value of 3.478 here. I'm gonna hit enter on that and I'm gonna say resize subtool, okay? So what's happened now, it's gone really big. If I turn the floor on, you're gonna notice the floor's really small. So I can reset the size in here without changing the value. Let me just go in and show you quickly. I'm gonna go across here and we'll just drag across. You can see now our size is correct, 15.99998. And here should be about three millimeters or something. Yeah, 3.478, so exactly what we have in here, okay? but this floor is out of sync and we can easily sort this out without affecting anything else. We just said ZBrush scale unify, click that and it will be fine. It will still keep all those settings across here. If I measure across, it's still the same setting. So now all we need to do is we need to say, right, okay, I want this um, a height of five in here because at the moment it's 3.478. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna make sure ratio is turned off. By the way, if you click slider subtool, it give you the size that it is at the moment. Gonna make sure ratio is turned off because I wanna I wanna um, basically bypass this. So I'm gonna put in here five and I'm gonna hit enter, okay? And I can leave all on or I can turn that off, it's up to you. If you've got more subtools, you might wanna turn it off. And we can just hit resize, resize subtool. So now it will take this value and it will change this value, but it will keep these the same. So click resize and there you go. Notice it's changed. So if I was to set this on 10 and hit enter and then hit resize, it's gonna give you a bigger one here. So five and there back to five. So now if I come out of here and I measure this um, like this, it's gonna give me a value of five. So now the only bit I've got to worry about is actually this inside area here which at the moment is 0 point something or other. So let's change that now. So to do this, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna create what's called a helper block. So I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna say, right, okay, we want two millimeters on the edge. So uh, that's two millimeters one side, two millimeters. Take four away from 16, you're gonna be left with 12. So if I put 12 in here and 12 in here, uh, and hit enter. Then what I can do is I can create a new bounding box subtool. Let's just hit that. Notice that I've got this turned off ratio and I've got all, because I don't want to affect this ring that I've created. So I've turned all off. It's really important that. Hit new bounding box subtool. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get this. Now, um, it sometimes behaves quite weird so let me just check what's happened. It's actually not put it down to 12. So sometimes you need to go in and just reset these things. And now I just click resize subtool. Um, not sure why it's done that. Let me 
just make this five by five. Okay, let's just start again. Let me just delete that out, click OK. Okay, let me just try that again. Um, right, let's just set this 12. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna set them all at 12 here. Hit enter, and then I'm gonna click New Bounding Box Subtool. Well, this should work. Okay, so it's made it big. All right, um, let's actually set it to 16. Let me just put 12 in again. Let me try something. I'm going to do 12, hit enter, and then resize the subtool. Make sure I'm on the bounding box, by the way, when you do this. I'm going to resize that. And it's not working. That's better. It can be temperamental, this. It's a 12, hit enter, resize. That's better. So that's given us 12 by 12. So sometimes with this, you might need to go in, put the number in, and make sure you hit enter, and then resize that. And then it seems to work. It clicks in. It's really temperamental. I don't know why. But there you go. But I know that's now 12. So remember we've got 16, so 17, so uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I'll have two millimeters around it if I bring this inner edge into the edge of here, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna go up to here. Now we've got a helper guide. I can turn that on and go to transparency. So I've got that helper guide in there. Just gonna turn the floor off. Now I wanna just um, separate out. I wanna polygroup this so I can move this edge. So I'm gonna go straight down to polygroup and I'm just gonna go group by normals, yeah? And that'll give me this inside edge that I can take. And I can move I can move those parts in now. So if I now press control shift and click on this inner piece, just make sure I've just got that inner piece there, control shift. And with that piece selected there, I can go control, drag the mask over it to mask it out. Control shift and click. Now Control click to inverse the mask. Yeah, control click to inverse that mask. All right, and now inside here, I can go to scale, I can turn this back to the gizmo, and I can center this. Make sure you center it. We're going to bring it in. Now it will scale. Oh, we've gone the wrong way. Sorry, let me just invert that mask and bring it in like that. So we're right to that very edge. If you want to zoom in, you can zoom in so you get it really accurate. So up to there, perfect. All right now what will happen is it will pull in slightly, you can see there, but that's not a problem because we can fix that in a second. So what I can do now is I can unmask this. So I'm just pressing the control key and dragging to unmask it. I'm gonna select all of this, mask all of this up, and then click to inverse that. And I'm gonna go center and I'm now gonna straighten this edge up by clicking here and dragging. That's gonna flatten that up. Now I'm gonna invert the mask by control clicking, put it over to the other side now, and bring this edge in. So I'm flattening this edge. Yeah, so I'm basically, all I've done here is I've just selected this edge here, I've inversed the mask, and then that means I can bring this out so now I can bring this back to five millimeters here, I can invert that mask and I can bring this one back to here, like that, simple. So now I'm left with this ring. So if I come back into this, I'm left with this clean ring. If we check all of our dimensions of this, let me just turn this off, come in here, drag across, we've got two millimeters there by 16, yep, and we should have five across here now, like that, 5.0052. So now we have this base and we're ready to work. And if this is a size that you're using all the time, again, you might want to save this out. Yeah, and just use this base. That way you haven't got to create this every time. So now you can go in and use all your tools, like you can go in and use your Z modeler and you could put a nice little bevel in here along the edge. 
you could click it once to repeat the last bevel move. Ooh, hold on. Oh, I'm on. There we go. You could set a different bevel for this. Put that in there. And then you've got a nice ring base that you can start to uh, sculpt on top of. And we can start subdividing that up like that. Or if you want to harden those edges a little bit in here, you could say uh, crease poly groups like that. And then you could divide it up and get a nice sharp bevel on those pieces at that size. So two millimeter depth there on the ring thickness and the five millimeter by 16. So that's how you can use the subtool master. And of course, you know, you can use the subtool master for lots of other stuff as well. Like you might want to take this bounding box again and, and alter that, put another size in there. So you'd hit slider subtool size. That'll give you that size. You might say, right, okay, well, I want this at, at 18 by 18 here. Um, enter, and then you could resize it in here if it lets you. <laughs> Or you could bring it down in size here like that back up to 17 like that and 18 yeah I like to do these kind of one at a time just so you can see so that's now a box size of 18 yeah you've also got this handy little helper guides um, in here you've got a little one unit helper block that you can create it gives you a little one um, millimeter block that you can use so if we measure that you can see that that is actually just a one millimeter block 0.99999 so you can go around using coming out of gizmo and using the transpose line to actually check your measurements in that top left hand corner so hopefully that's of use to you so you can get basically any base mesh you like or ring base mesh you like using that method.